We need more young chefs. We need more leaders. We got to really look at ourselves and our community because, you know, the police been here since we've been slaves. And to try to get them to change this 400-year-old institution because we feel like it today. I mean, the likelihood of that happening is just it's not low. likely. It's, low. it's very low. So, you know, there's a couple of things you could do. I would suggest everybody who leaves here, if you want to figure out how to have a, a safe interaction with the police, go on YouTube, type in College Muhammad, how to deal with police. And pull, it, and pull up the video, watch that, brother, break it down. And that's, that's all you need to know. But um, it's like the brother said, <laughs> See, we don't have our own community. We have communities where we live at, but they're not really all our communities. We don't own nothing there. We renting from people who are residential. We're, we're not. Yeah, we, not we don't own nothing. We're just yeah. renting. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, the thing is, is that if we decide that we're going to get our own place that we own and build it up how we want to, we can put whoever we want patrolling the streets and things like that. Now, is it true that you generally are not supposed to police where you're from? They don't allow you because it's a conflict of interest? Is that true, brother? That, that's not true, but, you, but I, I firmly believe that the powers that be understand that if you put a whole bunch of people that are very familiar with the people in the neighborhood, yes, they can protect them. So I believe from police chiefs to officers, they there's a conscious effort to put people in certain places so that they don't have a power base. I've always believed that. Yes, sir. So, like, with the strategy you were saying, you know, I think it's a valiant effort, and I, I thought that at one point, too, but you have other people controlling where you're going to be at. Because yeah. you're not working for yourself. You're working for this institution. And they have a hierarchy, and they decide how where everybody gets placed up in their hierarchy. The thing is, we don't got nothing that's our, that's our own. That's the whole... I mean, that's the biggest thing. We don't have nothing that's on. We don't have our own schools. We don't have our own hospitals. We don't have nothing that's on. Every time we need anything, we need a kid. We're going to have to go to somebody else for it. You know what I mean? If you need a banana, you got to go to somebody else for it. You know what I mean? So we're talking about education. We're talking about law enforcement. We're talking about rehabilitation. You know what I mean? That, those are definitely things that's out of our control because we got to go to other people to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like the brother said, we are supposedly the smallest demographic or population, but we're actually the biggest because all the other demographics, race-wise, break down into different countries. You take the Latinos and there's Mexicans, Colombians, you know, Guatemalans. You take the Caucasians and they got Irish, Russian, uh, you know, English or uh, Arab even, um, Lebanese. These are all different, considered Caucasians according to the census. And so um, we're the biggest because we don't break down. The black the 45 million black folks in America, we don't break down into nothing. We all just black. You know what I mean? And on top of that, we spend the most. America markets itself to the other countries of the world and tells them that when you come over, set up a store in a black neighborhood. Why? Because we don't make nothing for ourselves. So we got to go to somebody else to go and get it. And we spend that money with them. So you have Indian stores, Pakistani stores, Asian stores, Latino stores, and we're shopping at all of them. Everywhere we go, every hood you go, every city you go to throughout the whole nation. And everybody gets rich off us. We spend $1 trillion. It's $993 billion. But we spend $1 trillion every year. Black people. Trillion. Black people. Trillion. I'm talking about poor black folks in America. <laughs> We spend nine hundred and ninety-three billion dollars every year. Yeah, say that say one, uh, X, say that one more time. Look, it's nine hundred and ninety-three billion dollars every year. Mm -hmm. This is how much we spend. But we, but check this out. Ninety-four percent of mm -hmm. all that money goes out of our community right. and never comes back. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we spend it with people who don't live where we at, mm -hmm. and they don't have no interest of being where we at. And they take that money and they go to. El Grove, the nice part. Or they go to uh, Folsom or Roseville or Say whatever. Say that number one more time. 993 man. billion, brother. You telling me we can't get our own police? 993 billion dollars? Our own hospitals? Our own uh, schools? We have our own? I mean, well, schools. Yeah. I look, I don't care. I don't care. There's a whole lot that the 
government or police or white folks in general will want to do about us doing whatever we're doing. But the fact <coughs> is, what you want to do? You want to deal with that, or you want to deal with what we got now? What you want to deal with? And it's like the brother said, man, the, prop, the reason why we're here today having this problem still, and we have better brothers than all of us talking about it in the 60s, man. Do, talking about it in the 50s and the 70s, better brothers than we got today. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Talking about it and doing something about it. You know what I'm saying? The reason why we ain't got, we ain't got nothing today out of all that is because none of us is willing to risk all lives and put our neck on the line. We're always talking about, oh, the government going to do the police and white folks and all this stuff. And we all just scared, bro. That's a nigga. That's a real nigga. Yeah. You talking about Rick Ross and all them and all them fake ass niggas and they ain't talking about their real niggas? No, a real nigga is scared to do something for their people, bro. It's scared to rise up, bro, and stand up like a man. That's why when a brother said, man, don't let nobody emasculate you, he's not saying don't look for a fight and pick one, but don't let nobody just get away with talking to you however and doing however you want with you. That's a nigga. You better make a good account of yourself if you're going to die, because guess what? We all dying. Right. One day, we all, none of us, none of us, not, not a near one of us, not white folks, not nobody, is going to be here forever. It's not happening. So if you're going to really do something about it, you better know that it's, it's going to take somebody to come and kill you for you to not do it no more, bro. That's how we got to be, man. That's why we're not where we at today. Brothers were scared in the 60s. You didn't, yo, it was not easy to walk on Martin Luther King, bro. White folks didn't like Martin Luther King back then. Yeah, you know, on the TV and they talk about, can I have a drink? They consolidate all these brothers to one little phrase. Mm -hmm. I have a dream. Well, he said so much you know what I'm saying? Took, they consolidate these brothers to, uh, you know, by any means necessary or whatever yeah. like that. I mean, there's a whole body of work, work, knowledge of wealth that you need to study and grasp from these brothers, man. It was not popular At to all. be with them back in the day. Am I saying it right? Yeah. So, you know, these are the things that you got to understand, man. It's not going to get better until we decide that my mind is made up today as a man, as a black man, as a black brother, as a brother in general, that I'm going to do this for my people and we're going to do it or we just going to be dead, bro. And that's it. That's it. That's all, man. Once you make up your mind like that, everything changes, man. I'm not talking about taking, strapping up, everybody strap up, we're no, just going to go with the government. No, no, no. Hell no, I'm not talking about that, man. Because at the end of the day, let's say we do knock it off. Tell me what grocery store we're going to go to now. <laughs> Tell me what bank we're going to go to now. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to supply our water? We don't have none of that stuff, man. It ain't about that, man. It ain't about that. It's about y'all getting something up in here and doing something with it, man. Use these hands and make them work. Use this mind, make it work, man. Bring something into fruition for the benefit of your people, man. And that's what we're about. So if y'all with that, man, let's go. Let, we, we don't, I, look, I don't care what police doing at the end of the day. They've been doing it to me, people I know for the longest, man. I don't care what they're doing. If, if police is gonna come right down here and knock me off, cool. Right. Praise be to Allah, for real. Do it, I'm not tripping. That'd be the highest honor for me. Shoot. I mean, I'd be counted amongst a whole lot of brothers that had a real good name, right? You know what I'm saying? That's cool, man. And when we all take that mindset, that we just don't give a damn. Yeah. You know what I mean?